John Maguire reporting there. Well, let's now bring you up to date on the situation in Ukraine, where President Vladimir Zelensky is saying his country's forces have retaken more than 6,000 square kilometres of its territory from Russia since the start of September, with Russian troops in retreat. President Putin, meanwhile, appears to be struggling to find a response to the Ukrainian advances amid rare criticism in Russia. And Russia says it's not in retreat, rather it's a regrouping of its forces. Well, let's talk through these latest developments with Yuri Sack, who is advisor to Ukraine's defence uh, minister. Thank you for being on the programme. So just tell us in more detail uh, what territory you've managed to take back. Good morning. Uh, since the beginning of September, as you rightly said, uh, Ukrainian armed forces were able to retake and regain control over more than 6,000 square kilometers. This is uh, mainly in the Kharkiv region, which is northeast, um, as well as in the south of Ukraine, in the Kherson region. For the last couple of days, pretty much every hour, we had a report of Ukrainian army liberating another village or another small city and the progress of the Ukrainian army was quite spectacular. At the same time, Russians, whatever they call it, regrouping, relocating, they're just fleeing. They're fleeing chaotically. They are abandoning their military equipment. They are abandoning their own soldiers, even those who were killed in action. And what is important is that in those villages and those cities, which are now entered by the Ukrainian army, unfortunately, we are beginning to discover, again, torture chambers, uh, sites of uh, killing of peaceful citizens. So we are discovering things that have been discovered previously in places like Bucha and Irpin and Borodyanka. So this is very saddening. And of course, Russia, uh, while they are unable to respond militarily on the battlefield, they're doing what they've been doing all the way. They are resorting to the tactics of missile terror, because during the last couple of days, there have been lots of missile strikes at places like Kharkiv, Mykolaiv, and they have targeted specifically the civilian infrastructure, the energy infrastructure, which left without electricity hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians. And this is pure sign that Russia is indeed a terrorist state, and we are calling upon the international community to recognize Russia officially as a state sponsor of terrorism. And as you say, you've made significant process in a very short period of time. Why do you think you were able to retake that territory so quickly in the last week? We have been saying for a very long time that liberating Ukrainian villages, liberating Ukrainian land, meter by meter, village by village, is our top military priority. The success of this operation, of course, is firstly down to the determination of the Ukrainian army. It, is, uh, it has been made possible because of the high professionalism of the Ukrainian army. And of course, it was, it was possible because of the military support that we received from our international partners. The use of Western NATO standard modern weaponry played an instrumental role and was very efficient at disrupting uh, Russians' logistics at disrupting their supply lines, at conducting high precision strikes on their command centers. So all of these factors taken together, uh, and of course, a very high level of coordination and planning in the Ukrainian army resulted in a very significant progress during the last couple of days. And how can you uh, capitalize on this momentum now, do you believe? Because obviously uh, Russia has woken up to uh, what you are currently doing and your tactics at the moment. It is difficult to predict how the situation will develop during the next couple of weeks. But of course, Ukrainian army will continue to persist. Ukrainian army will continue to drive the enemy out of those territories. And hopefully we will be able to keep the momentum because our ultimate goal is, of course, the complete liberation of Ukraine and the restoration of our control over all internationally recognized uh, territories of Ukraine, including Crimea. And, and how critical is the support from the West in terms of uh, military aid supply training. Um, what, what do you need going forward? Going forward, we, of course, need more um, heavy weaponry and ammunition for systems such as HIMARS, for the 155 caliber cannons. Uh, but, of course, the next stage will be decisive. And to be successful during that stage, we need 
combat aircraft, we need tanks, and we need more armored vehicles. And I believe this is something which is now on the agenda, and this is something that our minister, Alexei Reznikov, is speaking to our international partners on a daily basis, because conducting counteroffensive efficiently and quickly and at a fast pace requires more tanks and more armored uh, military equipment. OK, we have to leave it here, but thank you for uh, being on the programme and telling us about your uh, recent success in taking back territory in Ukraine. Yuri Suk, their advisor to Ukraine's defence minister.